And the title of today's talk is, You Will See a Miracle of Our Lady. And it is about a priest who had fallen from grace. So how could Padre Pio help in this situation? Hello friends of following Padre Pio. On this channel we bring to you a series of short stories on the incredible life of our great saint Padre Pio. He was a Capuchin friar and he was a mystic and he was a tremendous miracle worker. So do stay tuned to find out more about Padre Pio and also to see what his intercession could do for you. And we encourage everyone, do be part of our Padre Pio apostolate by liking the video, share the video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. And during Lent, we have a special selection of videos, different videos every week. You can go to the video description below and click on the link through to our Lenten selection for this week, designed to help everyone make a slightly better Lent. And in our story, the year is 1948. And there are two sisters who now arrive at San Giovanni Rotundo wanting to speak to Padre Pio. And they had something very important, something urgent they needed to discuss with Padre Pio. But what had happened? What brought them here? Well, one of their brothers was a priest. And during World War II, something had happened and now he was being accused of immorality. It was not very clear the circumstances, but it happened during World War II. And his superior got involved, stepped in, the abbot, who was quite a severe person. And he insisted now on a long drawn out, painful process, exposing every minute detail and faults of this priest. And then at the end of this, the priest was suspended, a divinis which means that is a suspension which forbids the exercise of every act of holy orders. So it's a severe chastisement. He was not even allowed to wear the habit. So often today priests don't wear the habit, but in that time it was seen as a severe reprimand. And after this, the priest was now expelled from the monastery. And so he had to go to the outside world to find work. And he just simply vanished after that. He disappeared off the map. He was no longer seen or heard from again. Until much, much later, when someone in his family, purely by chance, they discovered this priest, the fallen priest, who was now living in a shocking state of misery. And even worse than this was his state of moral depravity. And one can only imagine the shock this must have been to the family. The news obviously went back and they started talking among themselves. It was a source of great suffering for them and consternation. We don't even know if the priest was given a fair trial. Perhaps, I'm sure, they could have done better in the process. But this was the cross that the priest was required to carry. And unfortunately, as a result, he was now a broken person both psychologically and morally broken, living in the gut, as we could say, like the proverbial, the prodigal son. And so through all of this, the whole family, they now met and they turned to Padre Pio, wanting to seek his help and comfort in the state in which they found themselves. And so they had a family meeting and they decided they needed to send someone, a representative, to see Padre Pio, to seek his advice. So these two sisters were sent to San Giovanni Rotundo, to Padre Pio's monastery. When they arrived there, San Giovanni Rotundo, it was already night time and everything was in darkness. So there was an entire darkness had descended over the whole scene. And the sisters had no choice. They had to stay in a house with some strangers, some kind strangers. Because this was before the times of the many, many hotels we find in San Giovanni Rotundo. Well, the very next morning, these two sisters, they set out early, extremely early, because they wanted to be at the monastery for Padre Pio's 5 a.m. Mass or 5.30 a.m. Mass. And they were at least an hour's walk from his monastery. It was still dark. It was bitterly cold and deserted outside. And they headed off, but being complete strangers to the place, 
They did not know which way to go, which way to turn. And after a short time, they started to feel lost and apprehensive and afraid. Which way should they be going? It's easy to understand in those narrow winding streets of Italy. But then something mysterious happened. Right then, in the midst of these apprehensions and difficulties, a shadowy figure, they said, appeared there ahead of him. They said there was something comforting about this figure. And so they felt encouraged and they followed the figure. And they walked like this, they said, for about another hour. And then they arrived right there at the square in front of Padre Pio's monastery. And the shadowy figure simply disappeared. So who was it? Could it have been Padre Pio's guardian angel? What a coincidence it was. It led them right there to the monastery. And then after Padre Pio's Mass, they were able to go and speak to Padre Pio. And they said, the sister said, that Padre Pio listened very carefully and in such a paternal way to the whole story. And he did not try to rush him to complete their story. He just listened and took it all in. And then right at the end, after they had explained all the details, they finally asked for Padre Pio's intervention if he could not intercede for their brother. And then after this, Padre Pio remained silent for a little while. Apparently he was quiet and he was just focused. Then he turned to them. He was obviously now very moved by this whole, this sad story. And he turned to the two sisters and said, Pray and pray a lot and you will see a miracle of the Madonna, of Our Lady. And so now the sisters were inspired, their hearts were filled with hope, and they returned back to their hometown. Now in their hometown, there was a sanctuary, quite an important sanctuary in the area, and it was dedicated to Our Lady, and it apparently was the destination of many, many pilgrims. And so they, they spread this news from Padre Pio around, and immediately the mother of the poor fallen priest, barefoot, she made the pilgrimage to that shrine there to plead with the mother of Jesus for the salvation of her poor son. And apparently the family continued like this, making acts of reparation and pleading for the son and their brother, to Our Lady, to Our Lord. And it took a long time. After some years, they said, a light now began to dawn. And they got news from a relative. The poor priest sent news of himself and of his plans that he was now going to return to Italy. So all of this the result of prayer and reparation. And then when he arrived in Italy, he applied for a job as a volunteer, they said, as a nursing assistant in an infectious diseases hospital. It's a pretty dangerous place to be working infectious diseases, and he volunteered to work there. So, so one can only surmise that the family must have assisted a little because he was a volunteer. And some while later, the priest then began having contact with a monastery in the area. And fortunately, the abbot at this monastery was a truly fatherly figure. And so he was received kindly by the other friars as well, back into the monastery, and he felt encouraged, and he now continued along this path. But it wasn't enough for the priest to just say, he's changed and he's now better. He had to prove himself. And so he had to go through a long period of trial, proving himself sincere through a series of penances and all of these things he stuck to with the highest degree until finally he was reinstated as a priest again. But now but behind the scenes, what had actually taken place for this miracle, this undoubted miracle to have happened? Well, a few years earlier, one of the sisters had actually, she had offered herself to God as a victim soul for her brother's salvation. And so in a sense, she was now pleading for God's intervention in the strongest way that she could. And it seems, it appears that her prayer was heard and accepted by God because while making her last pilgrimage, she actually fell dead right there at the feet of our Lord in the sanctuary of Our Lady. And so she had made all of these pilgrimages out of love and for reparation on behalf of her brother. And he was, as a result, restored to our Lord. 
I'm sure you'll all agree that it is quite a sad, moving story. We don't even know the full details, whether he received a proper trial. We don't know any of that. But Padre Pio saw that God could intervene. He could make a plan in this situation. And so through his encouragement, he got the ball rolling and prayers of reparation and restoration were needed. So in that sense, it's similar to the message of Our Lady of Fatima. Next time on this channel, we're going to see how Padre Pio has a vision of two mothers, and this is just moments before he died. So we're going to speculate, who could these mothers have been? We do encourage you to enroll your Mass pre-intentions. We have a Mass dedicated to Padre Pio every Friday. We bring your intentions to this Mass. So please just watch a video on the end screen on how to enroll your intentions. And do also watch our Lenten selection of videos. So we have a Lenten selection. You can go to the video selection, the video description directly below and click on the link to our Lenten selection. And these are designed, they're selected to try and help people make a slightly better Lent. So please do go through to those videos. Mm -hmm.